18th of August, 1945, three days after Japan's surrender to the Allies, the Indian nationalist leader, Subhas Chandra Bose, embarked on a flight to freedom. He was worshipped by millions. Tens of thousands were prepared to give their lives for him. Rubbing shoulders with the Nazis, Bose had only one goal, to kick the British out of India, even if it meant shaking hands with the devil. Beaten on the battlefield, Bose was heading for the Soviet Union, but his flight never arrived at its destination. The plane crashed. Bose died, or so the official version goes. In 2006, an Indian Judicial Commission concluded that the crash never happened. He didn't die in the plane accident. Factually, that he died, we couldn't get any evidence. So what really happened to Subhas Chandra Bose? Could modern science solve one of India's greatest mysteries? Calcutta the former capital of British India, the hometown of Subhas Chandra Bose. Anita Faf, Bose's only child and daughter, arrives at the city's airport, named after her father. Born and raised in Austria, Anita is an infrequent visitor to India. Thankfully, one can do these things today and uh, bypass. She's here to meet the veterans of the Indian National Army. This unconditional dedication to a cause which they showed, I think, makes them very unusual people. After decades of not having seen my father, they still hold an emotional tie to him, which is almost unbelievable. In 1944, 40,000 of them had marched from Singapore to the jungles of India, together with the Japanese. A man with unlimited courage a man with a distant vision, a man who felt for the millions of people of India. For many Indians, Subhas Chandra Bose has a unique place in history. He was the only nationalist leader who confronted the British Empire on the battlefield. Today, Anita Faf is on a personal journey of discovery about the father she never knew. Subhas was born into the family of a wealthy Indian lawyer in Bengal. He was sent to a British school as his father considered himself a loyal supporter of the British Raj. The British had been the colonial masters of the Indian subcontinent for more than a century. Bringing unity and stability to the country, they ruled with the consent of India's governing classes. One day Subhas might become an officer under British command. But there was another side to India, far removed from the pressures of Subhas's family and of his English school. Absconding at the age of 15, young Bose discovered an ancient world of mysticism and magic. In his teenage years, there was a rebellion. He ran away from home with a friend, went to northern India, it seemed to be a kind of spiritual seeking. He thought of himself as something of a pilgrim, of a searcher going out, searching for truth. Bose moved to Calcutta. 
It fully struck him how British rule was ultimately racist and how Indians were discriminated against by their European masters. There was one club. It was meant for only for Europeans, not for others. Asia trips, no. Indian, no. So on the gate it was written, dogs and Indians are not allowed. Subhas entered Presidency College. He's fondly remembered for standing up for the rights of his fellow Indians when he was a student here. Being the child of any successful parent, you get a degree of reflected glory, whether you like it or not. In my case, of course, it's a bit easier because uh, for most of the uh, time, I live in a country where people do not know or do, do not take uh, much account of who my father is. Uh, and I can sort of live my own life and, and not be cast in the, in the shadow of my father, so to say. Subhas passed his exams with flying colors. In 1919, he enrolled at Cambridge University in England to prepare for entry into the Indian Civil Service, the ICS. In British India, you have pretty strong racism. In British India, uh, he is uh, a black man. He's an Indian. And in Britain, it's different. After only eight months of study, Subhas passed the extremely difficult Indian civil service exam. To his surprise, he was the fourth best in his year. It threw him into a personal crisis. Does he want to be a servant of the British Raj? After he thinks about it for a while, he says no. The British, they're not thrilled that one of the top candidates would drop out, so they say, please reconsider, you don't know what you're giving up. And he says no. Bose returned to India to begin a career as a politician, helped by the reputation of his Cambridge degree and by his family connections. The Calcutta region was prone to flooding. Poverty was endemic. Bose organized famine relief in eastern Bengal, impressing Indians and the British alike. But it was Bose's fervent nationalism that didn't go down well with the British colonial authorities. He soon organized protests and strikes against British rule. His declared goal was to kick the British out of India. There were even rumors that he had links with Bengali terrorists. It didn't take long until he was arrested. Time and again over the next 10 years, Bose was locked up for his anti-British activities. In prison, his health declined. To avoid turning him into a martyr, he was released into the care of his family. The precondition was that he left India for a lengthy period of time. In 1933, he boarded a ship to Europe. His destination was Austria, where he was diagnosed as having a stone in his gallbladder. After an operation, Bose's health gradually improved. As he couldn't be in India, he would continue his struggle on the international stage. He calls himself, during this European period, ambassador of India in bondage. He wants Europeans, non-British, to support the efforts of India to obtain independence from the British Empire. Writing his autobiography, he hired a young Austrian woman, Emilia Schenkel, as his secretary. The two fell in love and secretly got married. One thing attracted my father that basically she was a rather self-assured woman. She found him very attractive, very charming. 
He was one of the people who, of course, always wanted women to uh, to play a strong role, and that, of course, was an exceedingly unusual attitude uh, for a man at that time, even uh, more so than what it is today. In India, there are many reminders of Bose's travels in the German-speaking world. It's made him hugely popular among the Indian young. For Anita, there is little she can do to escape her celebrity status as the daughter of one of India's greatest independence heroes. Back in 1933, Anita's father was heading from Vienna to Berlin. It was the beginning of the most controversial aspect of the Indian nationalist's life. He'd come to meet the Nazis, who'd recently taken over power. Bose was impressed by the supposed efficiency of the Nazi regime. He told others that he wanted a combination of socialist ideals and fascist discipline for India. But he criticized that the Nazis considered Indians racially inferior. Bose held meetings with Nazi officials. He wanted Germany's political support for Indian independence and asked for a meeting with the Führer himself. But Hitler wasn't interested. In his book, Mein Kampf, My Struggle, written in the 1920s, Hitler declared uh, that uh, the British rule in India in the very best interest of uh, the white person's race. So in that respect, he considered for very crude reasons that Indians cannot be trusted. Indians are unable to govern themselves. So this primitive racism prevented uh, Bose to get any kind of uh, systematic political alliance with Nazi Germany before 1941. It was time to return to India. Bose's stay abroad had greatly increased his reputation as an ambassador of Indian independence. I'm proud of my father because he was a man of great integrity. I think he must have been a very magnetic person. Uh, and those people who uh, even saw him at a distance uh, themselves, I um, had heard many incidents that they said, well, I just saw him from a distance and, and he looked at me and it made a difference to my life. But there was someone who was even more popular than Bose. Mahatma Gandhi is absolutely unique. Gandhi says the means are as important as ends. If you have a goal and you use corrupt means, you use violent means to achieve it, you contaminate the goal that you seek. Even though Subhas believed that the use of violence against the British was legitimate, Gandhi brought him into the mainstream of the Indian nationalist movement. He even ensured that Bose was elected president of the Indian National Congress Party. Now, about Gandhi, you have to remember, although 